today I'm going to give you my top five herring spawn baits. This list has not changed much for me over the last decade that I've really been fishing this herring spawn here in the southeast. If you're not familiar with what the herring spawn is, it is simply exactly like the name implies. It's when the, the herring, the threadfin shad, move up on those clay and rock banks to spawn. And those bass, especially after being, you know, after spawning, are going to be feeding up heavily and trying to recover and put on all that weight that they just lost during that spawn. Again, this works in the southeast, but it can also work out west. You know, it, it happens all over the country at specific times of year. And these baits that I have right here, I've got a few baits laid out and some rods as well, and I'm gonna walk you guys through those. But these baits have produced both numbers of fish for me and giant bass for me, the most consistent out of any other bait out there. Actually, I might add another additional bait at the end of the video. If you guys stick around, something a little sneaky sneaky, if you know what I'm saying. So. I might do that, depends on how generous I'm feeling. I'll make that decision at the end of the video if I show you guys something, again, a little off the books. But let's start off with number one. Hands down, I would say my most favorite way to catch them during the herring spawn and one of the best ways to do it is a top water. So this one right here is a chrome vixen. I don't think the top water matters a bunch, guys, and this is pretty controversial. I mean, I'm sure there's guys out there that are, you know, diehards with certain brands or sizes of lures. Many of you know, if you've been following this channel long enough, but my home lake is Lake Lanier, and we absolutely get giant blueback herring here. I mean, I'm talking six, seven, eight inch blueback herring that I've seen personally, and so I'm not afraid to throw, you know, a giant top water, and I personally think that's more fun anyway. I think it targets a little bit bigger class fish, but at the same time too, it's just more fun throwing a big lure in my opinion. I mean, why not? If they're gonna eat it, it's more fun. Who Would you rather, rather throw a Ned Rig or would you rather throw a big old topwater? Post it down in the comments below. I think that's an easy decision for me. But don't get hung up on the brand too much. Again, pick your favorite topwater. I think color is the most important. And for me during the herring spawn, chrome, and many of y'all have probably heard this before, but chrome is by far the best color, especially when it's sunny out, for targeting those herring spawn fish. It throws off that flash, it looks just like a shad, especially in sun, a shad or a herring, and those big spotted bass and largemouth bass come unglued. It doesn't matter what lake you're on, Again, especially in the southeast, but it doesn't matter if it's a shad spawn, they will come unglued for these chrome lures. Now, if it's cloudy out, I would say my close second is bone or like a, maybe like a white, but I would say more towards a bone, like a yellowish bone color. But those are really the only two colors you need across the board in all of these lures that I'm going to show you for the herring spawn to be successful 90% of the time. That's what I'll say. But hands down, if it's sunny out, go ahead and grab yourself a chrome top water and just go throw it on, on clay, windy banks and or rocky banks. Anywhere that there's hard bottom, that's where these herring and these shad are going to spawn. And so you want to target those areas with all these lures that I'm about to show you. So hands down, number one is a top water. I throw this on a, you know, pick your favorite rod, guys. This one for me, it's just a medium heavy, fast action topwater rod, eight to one to one gear ratio and 50 or 60 pound braid, just so it doesn't dig in on itself uh, or backlash when you're casting this lure. So that's option number one there. There was actually like five or 10 shad and herring that just blew up right on that point right there. I'm guessing they were getting chased by, by a bass or something but literally right on this clay and rock point that I'm on right here, fish blew up. Anyway, second lure option for herring spawn baits is a jointed, a hard body jointed swim bait. This one right here, probably my personal favorite across the board for any herring spawn is a Sabil. And this is actually the original Sabil. So anything that says A-cast magic swimmer on the bottom, that's the original Sabil. So that's, that's uh, one of the better ones. The new Berkeley Magic Swimmer 
it's a great bait. It's a good, uh, good swim bait, but I think there's something a little bit different around about those original Sabils that I think make these swim baits that much better. So if you guys can find them, go ahead and get the original. I think you can find them on eBay. They're kind of expensive, but, uh, yeah, two ways you can find out if they're the actual real thing. Again, a cast magic swimmer on the bottom, or a lot of them will have these eyes with the box in the middle. Hopefully you guys can see that. But that's how you can tell it's a Sabeel. Anyway, any multi-jointed swim bait will work, but you want it to be a herring profile. I have a number of different multi-jointed herring style baits. If you guys are interested in seeing more of that, stay tuned for the next video that drops after this one, because I'm going to be going in depth on everything there is to know about multi-jointed swim baits. I'm going to go through my entire collection. I'm going to go through which ones work the best. Uh, for the money, which ones work best, period, regardless of how expensive. We're going to go through rod, reel, line setup, how to retrieve them, what you're looking for, what areas to set up on. All of that stuff I'm going to do in the next video. So if you guys love multi-jointed swim baits or want to learn more specifically about this topic, make sure you stay tuned for that. But anyway, same rules apply here as with the top water. You want a bait that's chrome. As you guys can see here, I've got a chrome one, which is pretty cool or, you know, a bone, a white, anything, or just natural herring color. But a multi-jointed swim bait is my choice number two. Same thing, wind is a little bit better. You want those clay rocky points and uh, go ahead and cast these to schooling fish or up on flats where you see, you know, herring are spawning or think they might be spawning. And bass will absolutely destroy a multi-jointed hard body swim bait. All right, bait number three. A fluke. So you guys can see here, here's a soft body fluke. A number of different companies make a fluke. Don't get too hung up on it, guys. I don't think the bass care a bunch. You guys have heard me say that a bunch in my videos. Don't get too hung up on brand. I think there's select, you know, niche areas of fishing where brand really matters and a certain bait outperforms everything else in the market. But generally speaking, I don't think you need to worry about it too much. Pick your favorite brand. With a fluke, though, again, it's a great, more finesse style presentation that imitates a herring or a shad. With this one, I have an open hook just because I'm not around cover. I also like to throw this on an extra wide gap hook. So play around with what works best for you. But as long as you're hooking fish and you can cast it, you know, decently far, it's, uh, it's not going to make a difference. Again, you put a, a, a fluke in front of a, a bass that's chasing herring or shad up on a point, it's going to eat it. And again, this is just more of a finesse option. Now you can't cast this as far as the swim bait in the top water, which is one of the downsides to it. If you see those schooling fish, you know, from far, far away, you're not going to be able to get there with a the fluke. But if you can sneak up on some of these points and clay banks and rock, get really close to these fish and you hit them with the fluke, it's so finesse and it's so silent, it's so sneaky that most of the time these fish are going to eat. You can work a fluke too in a manner of different ways. You can, you know, twitch it to make it behave like a jerk bait. You can just reel it, you know, pretty fast like a swim bait where it comes through the water. You can, if you keep your rod up high, you can have it jump out of the water, kind of like a top water. So you can do a bunch of different things with this bait and they will absolutely crush a fluke during the herring spawn. So that's bait number three of my top favorites or top five favorites. Number four on the list comes in at a spinner bait. A spinner bait, again, is a great way to catch these fish because when there's hundreds of herring or shad up on a point, how do the bass find your lure? You either got to plink them on the head, you know, boink them on the head when you see them come up schooling, or if you have forward facing sonar, you can target them that way. But if you don't see them and you're trying to distinguish yourself, how do you do that? So when it's sunny out, a great lure to throw is a spinner bait. And with these blades, it throws a lot of flash and it really allows the bass to draw in on your lure. So I like a three eighths to a half ounce spinner bait for this time of year. Again, you're normally throwing pretty shallow and working it back pretty quickly. These bass are feeding up heavily, so you don't really need to be super finessey with it. You can move your bait very quickly right beneath the surface and they're going to come up and smash it. 
my favorite colors for this. Classic whites are phenomenal. Uh, as you guys can see here, I've got silver blades. I'll give you guys some juice here on this one. I always, and this is my opinion, I always change my blades to silver. I just particularly think I'm used to, again, on Lake Lanier, very, very clear water. And there's something about that silver that just makes a difference in my mind. Is it just a confidence thing? Maybe. Does it actually work better than the gold blades? Maybe as well. That's up for you to decide. But again, I'll give you guys that little tip there on what I do just to be a little bit different is I go double silver. And then, like I said, whites are perfect or anything natural shad colored. Like I said, greens, blues. Again, I don't think the fish care too, too much most of the time. Pick your favorite confidence color that looks something like a herring and go from there. Now, I will say if it's cloudy, I personally have not done as well on a spinnerbait. But if I were to throw a spinnerbait when it's cloudy, I would maybe keep that gold blade, one gold, one silver. Just because, you know, it's a little bit, it's, it doesn't have the flash that the silver or, you know, the nickel blades will. So that's bait number four, absolute fish catcher. Again, you can catch largemouth, you can catch spots. Doesn't matter when it's windy and those herring are up there. If you guys can't tell from, you know, how I'm speaking about this, it doesn't take a bunch to convince these bass to eat during a herring spawn. They're already feeding very like, aggressively and they want to eat. So they're probably not going to be too picky. If they are, one of these five baits will probably work. So just cycle through and make your rotations through your baits and you'll probably catch fish. It's a super fun time of year to go out because again, these fish are so aggressive. You can catch a bunch of fish and some true giants, you know, that are up there feeding and just caught up in the frenzy of eating everything they can find. And then finally, a tried and true staple around here in the Southeast, my fifth, in no particular order, but my fifth favorite herring spawn bait is the underspin. Now, the underspin is a perfect shad or herring imitator. Obviously, as you guys can see there, it's simply a jig head. You, you put your favorite paddle tail on the back of that jig head and you've got something that looks exactly like a herring or a shad. Swims just like a minnow. You're just going to cast it out and again, just slowly reel it back to the boat, making sure that it doesn't keel over. That's why you want to reel it slow so it comes back perfectly straight. And again, with all the herring and shad up there, same thing as the spinnerbait, that underspin or that blade on the bottom is going to distinguish your bait from all of the other baits up there. And as you guys can see here, I have a little modification. I'm not going to share it in this video, but if you're interested in finding out what that modification is to help me catch more fish on the underspin, go ahead and check out the video that I've linked right up here. And uh, you can see this underspin modification that will at least double your catch rate using an underspin or fishing an underspin. But another phenomenal herring spawn lure. This is very finesse. This is only three inches, guys, in total length. You don't need to make it finesse or keep it finesse. If you want to throw a five-inch swim bait on here, now is the time to do it. These fish are eating huge baits. I've been catching spotted bass here on Lake Lanier, and they've been throwing up herring that are six and seven, you know, again, almost eight inches long. I measured one the other day. It was seven and a quarter inches long. Absolutely huge herring, blueback herring. But they're eating big baits. You can throw big lures. And it's the perfect time to go fishing just to have a, a fantastic fun day on the water throwing fun baits. Again, all of these are, are very power fishing baits. They're not finesse aside from maybe the fluke, but the way you're fishing it, it's very, very active. And uh, again, power fishing techniques and just super, super fun. Now, I mentioned I might jump into another bait and I think I will. So you guys have stuck around this long. I will share kind of a, a, a local secret. I don't know. Actually, I mean, it's not a secret. It's been around for forever, but that bait is a rooster tail. So many people don't really talk about the rooster tail during the herring spawn. And honestly, I'm not sure why. I think a lot more people throw it than talk about it. And rightfully so, because it can absolutely get bit. I like to call it just more of like a finesse spinner bait, but same thing. 
it looks like a little shad or a little herring that's up there on the point. It combines the flash, you know, with a little bit of a skirt. And it's just a great way to, you know, finesse down your presentation if the bite gets really tough. And they will absolutely smash this lure. So throw this in the same place you would the other lures. Now, these lures are pretty cheap, this uh, rooster tail. So out of the package, I do make a few modifications. I could probably make a whole nother video on that. But what I like to do is I actually add a swivel up at the top because you will get a lot of line twist with this bait. And then also I cut off the cheap treble hook that comes on there and I add a split ring in my favorite hook of choice. So those are just a couple modifications that you can do the rooster tail to make it better, along with a few others. Again, I could probably make an entire video just on this bait alone, but uh, just for the, the basics in this video, that is another herring spawn killer. Go ahead and post down in the comments below if you've been fishing a rooster tail during the herring spawn before you saw this video. I'd be curious to know, you know, who's all throwing it again. I believe that many people are throwing this bait and not really talking about it. So there you go. Secrets out of the bag. Go ahead and, and try it when uh, it gets a little bit tougher and you will definitely catch fish. So that pretty much wraps it up. That's our top five herring spawn baits, or those are my top five herring spawn baits. They work phenomenally. Again, the fish are generally pretty easy to catch when they're up there, you know, busting top waters or, or herring and shad on, you know, out of the water. And it's, it's pretty easy to get bit. Most of the time, sometimes they can be pretty finicky. But if they are, just rotate through these five baits that I just shared with you guys and most of the time, I promise you, you will be successful and catch some, catch some great fish. It's one of the best times of the year to be out here. It's so much fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, go ahead, like the video. Again, comment down below. And I will see y'all in the next video.